In this problem, we are looking at the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability. And basically, theoretical probability is what we compute. So we do some math to, uh, to make a fraction or a decimal or a percent. Um, that is the probability of something happening. Experimental probability is what happens if you actually try it in the real world, and they do not always match. In fact, usually they don't quite match. For example, let's say I was going to flip a coin four times. The chances are, theoretically, that I would get a two heads and two tails, right? Because there's a 50-50 chance of heads or tail every time. But you know that if you flip a coin four times, you might get three heads, even four heads. You might get four tails or two tails or, or three tails. So it's a little different every time because it's random. However, the thing about probability is that the more you do something, the greater number of times you do it, the more likely you are to average out to that theoretical probability. So if I flipped a coin a thousand times, I'd get a lot closer to that 50-50 than any uh, time I, I flipped it you know, two or three or four times. So that's the difference between the theoretical probability and experimental probability. Let's take a look at this problem. It says the spinner below shows 10 equally sized slices, and Jane spun the dial 20 times and got these following results. So this is experimental. These are the results of Jane's experiment of this, this probability situation. It says fill in the table below and round the answers to the nearest thousandth. So this time it sounds like we are converting our probabilities to decimals. Uh, a says, assuming that the spinner is fair, compute the theoretical probability of landing on black or gray. So here's a black, here's a gray, 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 black, gray. So there's five. So this is five out of 10. If we convert that to a decimal, we've got 0 0.5. And they want this to the nearest thousandth, so I'm going to put some extra zeros there. So 0 0.500. That is the probability of landing on gray or black, at least the theoretical probability. Then it says, from Jane's results, compute the experimental probability. So gray and black is 3 and 5, so that's 8. And this is out of 20 tries. So 8 out of 20 is 4 out of 10. So that looks like 0.4. So, and if we do this to the nearest thousandth, we'll do 0 0.400. So as you can see, they didn't quite match up there. It's fairly close, but it didn't quite match up. C says, assuming the spinner is fair, choose the statement below that's true. The first statement says, with a small number of spins, it is surprising when the experimental probability is much less than the theoretical probability. Actually, it's not. With a small number of spins, you can have um, results that vary pretty wi widely from the uh, theoretical probability. So that wouldn't be surprising. The second one says, with a small number of spins, it is not surprising when the experimental probability is much less than the theoretical probability. It's not surprising to me. I'm going to check that one, but let's read the third one just to see. With a small number of spins, the experimental probability will always be much less than the theoretical probability. Well, that's not true. It might be less. It might be more. It might be right on. We just uh, can't uh, predict that with any accuracy. So uh, this third part, sometimes you'll see the question with a small number of spins. Sometimes you'll see it with a large number. The thing to remember is that the larger the number of trials, the closer the experimental probability should get to the theoretical probability. So that's a little bit of work with theoretical and experimental probability.